time for some more finicky bits, an odd camera setting, which was my mistake, and um, little small parts that take a long time to do. <laughs> Back to the shop and the channel and as you can see the drawers are done and they've been drilled for the hardware the hardware came uh, on the day I said it was going to come in the last video and so I went and get ahead and set up my jig and then drilled all the holes now when this gets finally put together it's going to little look a little different because the hardware for these drawers is in the middle the hardware for the drees drawers these drawers are closer to the side in period pieces I've seen it done both ways where they all line up, or these these are in the these are close to the center in the middle of these drawers, and these are off to the side. I mean these 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 holes kind of line up here, but I decided to do it this way. And as promised, yes, I got dovetails in every drawer. You see those? Yeah, it's got my dovetails in, and I expanded them by one or two dovetails on each larger drawer. So that it uh, there's there's symmetry when you look at it. So what's on the agenda for today? Well, first off, I have to build a frame for the base. Now, what I mean by that is I'm going to build a frame out of pine that matches the exact size of the cabinet, and to that I will mount the base, and the the frame will be mounted to the base one quarter inch down from the um, the top edge of the base. So. Uh, using one of my other pieces of wood, the frame will be mounted down about here, all the way around it, and that's how the unit is going to sit into the base. So the base will have this frame inside it, and then the outside cherry that looks kind of nice if I can do it, and this will sit inside that in that like a big pocket with the pine feet in the very back. That is going to be the base, and that'll be made out of pine. Pine, pine, pine. Got some pine here. Um, believe it or not, I got this as a cheap pile at Home Depot, and they're dead clear. Go figure. So uh, the top um, um, crown molding is going to be a little different. I wanted to go more subdued this time. So this is the profile for the crown molding. See that? That's the profile for the crown molding. And has a, a has a step on the back, and it's going to sit just like so, all the way around, like this. And I'm going to leave the the uh, half blind dovetails on the top partially exposed, just so you can see them. Because what the heck, why not? So uh, what I need to do now is I need to these. This is going to be milled out of several 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 passes. I'm going to cut the profile, have to cut the notch, and round over the front to give me what I'm looking for here. And as I said in an earlier video, this is down a quarter inch from the top, so it kind of matches these gaps here. Um, and I'm not going to have a frame for this. It's going to be mounted directly to the front and sides of the, of the cabinet. So again, leaving those uh, half-blind dovetails exposed on the top. So let's make some measurements and go ahead and make the lower frame. Um, I need more cherry. I may get it before this video comes to an end. I may not because this is this is the day after Christmas. Uh, I have some I have some prezies to show you too. Uh, later on in the video, I'll show you some prezies that uh, we bought the shop. We tend to buy presents for the shop. Yeah, I know, kind of bizarre, but we do anyway. So let's let's do this uh, lower frame, and it's going to be basically it's just going to be pocket hole joints and four pieces of wood. And that's going to hold that load, and it's going to be screwed into the base, glued and screwed into the base, so that it uh, holds this entire cabinet. Quick aside, some prezies for the shop, but first, a pencil Mara bought me that I like a great deal. This is uh, a Monteverde mechanical pencil. It's, it's machined out of a single piece of aluminum, uh, hex shape. It's very comfortable. It's also got some nice mass to it. It's 0.9 millimeter, and you unscrew it like this and screw it to get the graphite out. It has a stylus for a tablet on the other end, and inside that st that little cup cup is um, a little screwdriver. Flip a flip around screwdriver, both straight and Phillips head. We've had these holdfasts forever. These are half inch diameter, hand forged. They're great, except 
half inch hole fasteners don't work very well in three quarter inch holes. And of course, all my dog holes are three quarter inch. So we, I bought, we bought these uh, cam type hole fasteners, and they work pretty good. You slide it down into the hole, which is the shaft is just under three quarter. Push down on it, pull up on the cam. It does not move. That is just down there. That's that's really great. And then it comes out. And we also bought some of these cast steel ones. They look nice and robust, and like they'll take a beating and keep on going, and uh, not so much. Yeah. Look at this picture. Look at the grain on these things. Um, the grain's about the size of pebbles. It's terrible. Uh, I don't know what they made this from or what the process was, but yeah, that's that's some big big grain, and I I think I've hit this like three times, or or and or maybe four, and it just popped. This went down through the bench, and that went flying across the shop. And I think oh wait oh oh a couple of things other things. Mara got me a space pen. A cool space pen. I've loved these things for years. Space pen. Uh, writes upside down in water in zero g or microgravity, if you will. The red's under on oily stuff and whatever, and um, but I don't think I'm going to be doing any negative G's in the Piper. Not going to happen. Uh, now, uh, there's a lot of myths about this pen, and no, NASA did not spend tens of millions of dollars to develop this pen. It was developed by the Fisher Pen Company in, I think they're in Nevada, and didn't cost the taxpayer a dime. Oh, yeah, Mara thought it was time I owned my own airplane, so she bought me a J3 Piper Cub. Back to the project. I've got the pocket hole jig set up over here instead of on the table saw. I've got my pieces cut for that lower frame. Now this is one and a half inch wide and it'll be pocket hole screwed into the base of the, uh, of the uh, I think, or might go directly in this way, I don't know. We'll see. But I need to do pocket holes in the cross pieces on this. So I got the, everything's all set up. The cutting depth is set up. I'm going to go one hole per, and then a lot of clamping and gluing and screwing in of the pocket hole screw. And of course, I've got a dust collector down here, which is kind of loud. And there you go, like so. And they're going to go like so with glue, of course. But since these are going to be fastened into the base, uh, this is this is more than enough joint for the uh, for the end for the corners. I don't have to do lap joints here because this is all going to be fastened into the cherry of the base. Let's uh, let's tear this down and set it up for gluing and screwing. So what I've got here is that one screwed in place. You can see how I've got it clamped down here and here. This is using our new clamps. This one's ready to go in place. I pre-wet the the end grain joint so as not to starve it. So when I put this one in, there. So that's essentially what I what I need to do. Check the square. There, little tap. That's dead square. That's dead square. So this is the sides, two sides and the front or back, depending on where it winds up. Uh, the next thing to do is to, is to let these joints cure. And then we'll do the next uh, long joint on that one. We'll just flip this whole thing around and do it again. Like the patch. And here we are. Like I said, you, 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 I mean, you've, all, you've all seen pocket holes being installed and pocket holes being drilled and all that kind of stuff. You don't have to see all of that. But at least um, you get to see the finished frame. See how it became up off of here very nicely? Because this is waxed. But this is the frame I was talking about. So how is this gonna work? Uh, let me get a piece of cherry over here and show you what I have in mind. So let's say this is the front cut with all its fine shapes and whatever. And what's gonna happen is this frame will be mounted a quarter inch down on the inside of the base, and this frame is what the cabinet's going to sit on. The chest of drawers is going to sit on. It won't be fastened, probably. It just you pick it up and put it in place. And um, this will have, of course, 
a front and, si and two sides made of cherry with whatever pattern I choose for the, for the bracket feet, the back feet will be um, just plain pine. That's all they'll be. Uh, they'll be on the side, I'll probably put that design front and back. And then of course in the front, it'll be on right and left and all that, but there'll be also be a return in the back that'll be made of pine, three quarter inch pine. But this is the frame I was talking about. Um, like I said, the, the, the crown mold is not gonna have a frame. And I think I'm probably gonna duplicate the crown molding that's going on the top in the reverse on the edges of the, uh, the base. So next step is to go ahead and start working on creating the top crown molding. Like I said, I'm out of the cherry I need to build the bottom. I hopefully will have that soon. But let's go ahead and uh, start shaping the cherry that's going to be the top crown molding. And then once when that's done, I'll just fasten it in place. Now to make the crown molding, and this is a two-step process. Uh, the first step, I'm gonna put the rabbit in the back that will allow me to mount it on the, uh, the cabinet, the, the chest of drawers, uh, symmetrically all the way around. I've already set up the router bit, router table up. I've got my half-inch spiral cutting bit in there with a eighth of an inch out and a quarter-inch depth, so it'll be a quarter-inch deep, eighth-inch in, and that will give me my rabbited shoulder to mount it to the uh, to the top. And after that, then I'll cut the profile. And that's going to be interesting evolution, as they say. So let's get uh, feather boards in place. Move my things out of the way here. Get it started. Now let me put this on. And turn on the dust collection. Let's go. And there it is. That's the rabbit. Now what I need to do now, see the rabbit, is cut the profile in on this side here. The front, this is the front. Rabbit's in the back. So what I need to do now is change the bit. I've changed the bit. And uh, I'll show you the bit after I make the cut. I've locked up my piece with the feather boards. And the trick to not get burning is I slowed the bit down, because this is my variable speed router, and I'm going to get it through the work piece, get it through the cutter as fast as I can by hand without damaging it. But if you slow down or stop, you get a chance of burning with woods like cherry and maple and whatever. So let's go ahead and pull this thing through and uh, move on from there. So notice how I push the work piece through at a constant speed from one end, and then when it came off the other end, I went, came around here and held it up against the fence and pulled it with my hand, from with this hand, even though I've got the fences on there, the uh, the yeah the uh, those those hold thing down things. So there it is. I got a little bit of a stuff over here. I got to eliminate. Let me do a quick check and see if I got enough of the material left over to do that. Yes. So um, it, it did move a little bit on this end. It's not a big deal. So there is the crown molding that's going to go in place. Now, once I get this cut with the 45s and ready to be mounted up, I'm going to go ahead and back cut this corner off to give it a more of a slope in the back, just because it should. I think it'll look better. So I've got another one already cut for the other parts. And uh, so the next thing to do is just trial fit this up, get the 45s done, do the back cut, and then fasten it in place. So I'm cutting the 45s on the front piece here. A um, couple of tips. If you can do all the cuts with the blade only on one side, do it that way because it's, it's more precise because um, the opposite cuts are going to fit better. In this case, I can't do that. So I had to flip the blade over to do the other side, which is this corner over here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sneak up onto it. I'm going to cut on the other side of my line and then sneak up to it. And the other thing to do is the longest back that you have up against the fence. So you've got good stability. So let's give this a shot. Yeah, I think I got it. So 
the front's done. Now the back, the sides are easy. You're just going to 45 one side, run it out the back, fasten it in place, and cut it off flush with the back of the of the of the cabinet. And with for that, I have other pieces here. So this one, let me turn the camera a little bit. There we go. So this one, uh, let's see. I got it's going to go here like that. So what I want to do is cut a 45 on this end here, and that, oop, <sighs> not damaged, uh, it's cherry. So cut the 45 this way, and and then make sure I get a good fit to the side, to the end of this, and then I can just chop this off and use the other end of it to do the 45 over here. So let's do that. That's a really good fit there. That's a really good fit. So let me mark the back. And I'll take the headset off some. I'm going to go back off camera here, I think, and mark the back of it here to take um, this much off and leave a little bit. Oops. That's too short, but I have one more piece I can use for, for the sides. You, know, you always cut more than you're actually going to need. Perfect. That's going to be, oh, that's a nice fit. That's a nice fit. So let's do the other side. See, I've got another piece. Uh, cut more than you need. When you're doing molding like this by yourself and designing your own molding, cut more than you need. Just, just go crazy because you know there's going to be issues. At least you would hope they would, wouldn't have issues, but you're going to have issues. So with this one, I want it to be that way. I want to cut it this way. And let's see what we have here. Oh yeah, that's a really good fit as well. So let me just mark the back of this. Of course I don't have my pencil in my, in my pocket. There it is. The new pencil I got for Christmas from Mara. My fun, wonderful pencil. Put there. Mark that beyond the end. I can cut that off with a saw, hand saw later. There are my three pieces of the crown molding. Now what I need to do is just nick off this corner here a bit to give it more of a finished look. And then we can fasten these things up in place. I've cut the corner off the back, giving it a little more, a little more elegance in the line here. And now I'm going to glue and pin. And this is going to be interesting. Um, oh, there we go. I put these on, and then they're gonna have to sit for a while, of course, for the glue to cure. And then when we carry this thing around, I think I'm gonna have to inst instruct whoever helps out to be. This is kind of delicate, so don't mess with it. The the uh, molding on the armoire I built for Mara was delicate only in that the part that came up, the cove that came up, was rather thin. So let's uh, spread some glue here. I found out with Mars Armoire when I used the pinner, the filler I have is really, really good. It really makes it disappear. The pinholes disappear. The other alternative, of course, is to soak them and get them wet and let them swell up. And then sand, and they'll also disappear. But this is the easiest way to do it. Let's, uh, Now we do this end here. And there it is. 
I gotta wipe a little bit of this off. Uh, losing my tools. Gotta wipe a little bit of that glue off there. And voila. There you have it. Let's bring the camera into a little bit. And here's the crumbly. And you'll note that it's since I have that quarter inch down. It it has it, it this gap's a little, wide, a little narrow. This gap looks more like it should be. It looks like this is actually a three quarter inch inch piece of wood back here. Cause it's, and there it is. It is in place. So we'll end this episode here. All is well with this. Uh, we'll do the base in another episode, the next episode, because this is bumping up against twenty minutes. And I thought I'd I mentioned I was going to show you the bit that I used. This is the bit. It's, I've had this for a million years. It came with that big set from the woodworker show many years ago that was cheap. Um, I haven't seen one like it anywhere else. It's like a tiny molding bit, whatever. But it works really well, and so I'm going to keep that one. So until next time, make great things out of wood. Make finicky things out of wood. <laughs>